Hello again, everybody. My name is Pixel Rain, or Rain, you know, keep it short. And today we're going to take our bland little voxel noise city from this to something a little more colorful. Um, I think it'll be another pretty short one today, but you never know how that works out. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start by making a... Can't even type today. We're going to start by making a class called Voxel Color. Name, again, really doesn't matter, but I like to keep it straightforward. We'll go ahead and get rid of everything in the class, get rid of the mono behavior inheritance, because we really don't need that. And we'll mark it as serializable. We're going to have a few public variables here. One for the color we want the voxel to be, and then we're also going to have a metallic and a smoothness variable in here. So that all your voxels can be configured with your color, metallic, and smoothness, and that'll, you know, make your world look a little more alive. We're going to come over to our world manager class once we've got that all set up, and we're going to have just a array in here. Uh, voxel colors called world colors and to access this we're gonna do the probably less than efficient way of doing it but we're gonna go ahead and make a singleton for it so we just uh, snag this instead of boring you guys with typing everything out so in case you didn't know what singletons do we're going to set up a static reference to our world manager with just call it underscore instance and that's going to be a private one so it's not accessible publicly and then we'll make a public reference to our world manager instance and instead of actually holding a variable it's going to have a git accessor and we're going to do a check for if the private instance is null if it is, then we'll try to run find objects of type. Not efficient, but it only has to run once, and then we'll return it. Pretty straightforward, right? So that means you could do something like world manager dot instance dot world colors, and you can access it without actually having to have a reference to the world in your object. Um, I don't know if singletons are technically considered a bad code habit, but I use them a lot in my managers, it makes things easier, and, you know, that's really what we're all about, or at least what I'm all about. And then we want to add one more thing for our singleton here. We want to make sure that, you know, when we get to a point where we're transitioning scenes, we don't end up with du duplicate world managers and end up with multiple instances of the world trying to generate at once, and, you know... It's never a good time. So what we'll do is check if instance isn't null already. And again, that's that private static reference. And then if our instance isn't null and it's not this, it's not this object, then we want to just destroy this. That means there's already an instance running. We don't need to make a second one. We don't need to have a second one. And if there's not already an instance, we want to actually just assign underscore instance to this. Now, that should make this little part of the code where we do the find object of type never have to run, but weird things happen sometimes, so I'd rather have the uh, double check just to, just to be safe myself. And then, now that we've got our singleton set up, we can come back over here to the editor, and now we've got our world colors. We'll go ahead and add an element to that. And I think I want to choose a nice blue color. We'll set that metallic to 1 and the smoothness to 0.75 because why not? And that'll be the color of our world for right now. Then we can go ahead and go back in here, go over to our container, and we're going to be adding a couple variables here. Nothing too complex. We're going to come down into our generate method and we're going to add a 
variable here for vox color, color, and um, our voxel smoothness slash metallic. I don't think I explained this in previous videos, but you put variables here to outside of your for loop so that they can be reused without having to allocate a whole new variable. I'm not super knowledgeable on you know, the heap and stack and allocation in general, but that usually seems to be more efficient in my experience. And then we're gonna come down a little ways into our actual loop. And once we've got our voxel assigned here, we'll go ahead and we want this little chunk of code. So we're gonna assign our voxel color to come from the world colors variable that we set in our world manager and we're gonna choose from that array based on our block ID. You have to do block ID minus one with the way everything is set up because zero is error, and if you try to index and do the array like that, you'll get an out of bounds error. So block ID one will reference the, the first entry in the array, and then we want to actually set our color to be the vox color dot color variable, and then set the alpha to one this will come in handy later when we get to things like water and we want some transparency and then we'll set our vector two, our voxel smoothness to be voxel colors metallic and smoothness and then the final thing we have to do for this section is we're going to add our actual colors to the mesh data. To do that, you'll just have to mosey on down to your mesh data. We'll go ahead and add a list for colors and a list for UVs too. Now I'm using UVs too because we will eventually have the option for textures to be used. So you wanna keep the UV zero channel clear and UVs too is just, you know, just keep it a little spicy, make it a little weird. Go ahead and add those to our clear data. So we'll do UVs2 equals new list, vector2, and we'll do colors equals new list. And we'll add it down here as well to clear it. Clear. And yeah, I actually did do it in that order. Colors.clear. And then we also have to actually set that on our mesh. So we'll do mesh dot set colors, colors, and mesh dot set UVs. We want that to be the second channel. And then UVs too. Move it down below just for, just for good measure. And then we'll come back to our editor and you can of course run it, but you won't see any difference yet. We have to make the shader to utilize our vertex colors. So we'll go ahead and make a new folder called shaders. And then we're going to uh, go to shader graph, URP, and then we wanna make a lit shader graph. We'll call it, uh, let's call it voxel vertex colors. And we'll go ahead and open that up. Like I said, the shader is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna take our vertex color and we're gonna output that straight to base color. And then we're also going to make a UV node. We're gonna switch that down to UV channel two. And then we're gonna pipe that into a split. Go ahead and minimize this. And then our R value is gonna be metallic and our G value will be smoothness. So we'll go ahead and just pipe those through and go ahead and save the asset. And if you rerun it and you go to your material and you assign it, you should have a nice deep blue color or whatever color you chose with your chosen level of metallic Actually looks kind of nice, just that simple little bit. Ooh, look at that shine on the top. So that's your first little bit of adding color. Like I said in the previous video, our next video we're going to actually work on adding noise to our project.
and in doing so we'll start adding multiple kinds of voxels to it so you can have a surface voxel a subsurface voxel and from there we i don't know yet we'll figure out where we're going to go from there but thank you everybody for joining me in this process of adding just a little splash of color to our voxel city it looks like a very cramped city it's the only way I can really describe it. It'll look better once we get some actual noise running behind it instead of just a random Y height. But for today, I think that's that's some good progress. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video series so far. Remember, if you have any comments, suggestions, or you know you have ideas for other things I can work on, or ideas for this when we get to that point in the project, feel free to let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I know it's still uh, getting started and I know I'm still new at doing these videos, but it'll really help me out in the long run and I will see you guys in the next video.